Much love and thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. So this is it. This is what I overdose on. Everybody knows that I absolutely adore coffee. I genuinely like the taste and the warm, cozy feeling I experience after finishing the cup. But sometimes I find myself running dry at the most inopportune times and I'm going without my elixir of life during video making and such, and man, that is miserable. But then I learned about Trade Coffee, a service dedicated to mailing top quality coffee directly to your doorstep, and damn, there are a lot to choose from. If you're not sure which one's best for you, Trade has you covered. You go to their website and you take their quiz. They'll ask you how you like your coffee from a brewer, an espresso machine, Keurig, Pobs, like the whole bean, do you like it grounded? You name it, they'll match what they think is the best choice for you. You choose how frequent you want your deliveries to match your budget and all that, and then when you get your order, you're rated on their site, tell them how good the match was, and then you repeat the process if you so desire. I'm gonna try necessary coffee for today, it's medium roast too. I only drink dark roast and such when I need an extra kick and a stomach ulcer. I use a Keurig for my coffee, so I got a refillable pot here, I'm gonna scoop some coffee in, some Irish cream here, I prefer the Bailey's brand, no sugar whatsoever, don't wanna overly kill the taste. So again, that's Trade Coffee, the first 100 viewers to click the link in the description below will get 30% off their first bag when they sign up. So coffee connoisseurs, be sure to get on that. Okay, this is what I'll consider to be the true end of this first Kirby Marathon. I will return to the series proper at some point, look at some spin-offs, the other handheld entries. Maybe by that time, there'll actually be a 3D game. You never know, we get close here when you don't have a vehicle in the city trial mode. You can run around in a three-dimensional plane. One step at a time, they always say, with the, the Kirby franchise, these steps are like, 5,000 miles apart. Today's subject is Kirby Air Ride. Sometimes I catch myself calling it Kirby's Air Ride. I don't know why I feel the need to make the title possessive. Sounds more natural to me, I feel. Yes, this is technically a spin-off game, but as I mentioned in the Amazing Mirror video, this game was the very last Kirby game that was directed by series creator Masahiro Sakurai. The Crash Team Racing of Naughty Dog's original Crash Trilogy, if you will. But it was shortly after this game's release that Sakurai took his leave from HAL Laboratory. Wasn't too big on feeling pressured all the time to create sequels, and I wonder if he still feels that way. Well, I can't speak for the man. Maybe he relaxed that philosophy in the coming years, or maybe he's dying inside every time some douche asks him when's the next Smash DLC coming out. This might sound a little familiar, but like a couple of other Nintendo-related products I reviewed here, Kirby Air Ride is a GameCube game that was originally a Nintendo 64 game. One of the first, in fact. It was shown around the same time that Super Mario 64 was being showcased, all the way back in 1995. But this iteration would end up being cancelled after a strained development cycle, and it wasn't until 2003 where the project resurfaced for the Nintendo GameCube. I'm thinking, Sakurai knocked it out of the park with the first two Smash Brothers games, especially Melee, and now he had free reign to make whatever the hell he wanted, so he probably said, fuck it, I'm finishing that Kirby Racing game before I skedaddle. And that's where we are now. This is Kirby Air Ride for the GameCube, and you'd be forgiven if you thought I accidentally popped in a Smash Brothers game because these menus and layouts are ripped right out of that series. Hell, we even have a few elements here that could be considered a precursor to Super Smash Brothers Brawl on the Nintendo Wii, which was about five years after this game came out. Pretty interesting to see this typography as a sort of prototype for things to come. There's even this checklist where you fill out these squares when you achieve specific milestones, and you can unlock things like different vehicles, music, and characters and all that when you break certain squares. Good to keep you coming back, and this game definitely needed it because without that, my god, Kirby Air Ride would be one of the most barebone racing games I ever experienced in this generation. But I mean, it's still bare bones. It's a racing game spinoff, I know, but there's absolutely no story in any capacity. Kirby Air Ride is nothing but gameplay with three different modes, Air Ride, Top Ride, and City Trial. Let's start with Air Ride, the mode you'll likely pick first. Nothing much to it, you're in control of Kirby and you race a couple of laps in your stage of choice. A relatively healthy amount to pick from when you begin, all branching across different themes which you might find familiar. There's a grass theme, there's a sky theme, a volcano theme, an ice theme, etc, etc, with only one being unlockable, this nebula belt here. I think this was supposed to be the rainbow road of this game, I'm not quite seeing it. I'm reminded more of Radiant Emerald from Sonic R. It's a more traditional track, which, which is odd for something you have to unlock. 
as Sakurai's last Kirby game, it radiates with his style throughout, and I do love that about the game. You know, it looks great. Runs exceptionally smooth, too, even with four-player co-op. Yeah, the game still runs at a consistent 60 FPS even then, and that's great to see. The GameCube was rocking that power, man. It's just too bad you can barely fit anything in these tiny-ass discs. I wish the game would make up its mind on the style of music. We got a lot of good synth compositions here, but some are completely orchestrated or played with real instruments, and they sound so good, but it's like... Why do only some tracks get this treatment? I love Checker Knights too, so bombastic, I love it. So, okay, when I was first playing this, I was a little nervous because I was not liking what I was playing. And I see a few of you guys saying that, you got a lot of fond memories with this game, that it was one of the best, and here I'm like, oh fuck, I'm not liking this game. It's Sonic Riders all over again. I'm gonna have a bunch of kids flood my notifications with how wrong I am because I'm not allowed to have a different opinion. God forbid, but it's funny because the issues I have with Air Ride, kind of the inverse of the issues I had with Sonic Riders. While Sonic Riders bombarded you with mechanics and had a tremendously steep learning curve, my issue with Air Ride was its simplicity, or its over-simplicity. Kirby Air Ride only uses two things on the controller, the analog stick and the A button. The analog stick is for steering on the ground, and only steering on the ground since acceleration is automatic in this game, and it's also used to control your elevation. You can glide for a few seconds every time you speed off of a ramp or drop off. And you know, I actually like that. It does feel good to gain access to a shortcut or power up when I can control my flight in just the right moment, a mechanic I find more responsive than, say, flight characters and Sonic Riders to make comparisons to that game again. The A button is used for everything else. Everything else. Inhaling enemies to copy abilities, using boost pads on the ground to gain some speed because just driving over them is simply not enough, and this charging maneuver that acts as both a brake button and a drift so to speak. You're encouraged to use this charge on sharp turns and hairpins because with proper use, you can take off on a blast of speed after charging it enough, which is fine, reminds me a lot of Sonic Rider Zero Gravity. Only I don't feel it's needlessly plastered all over the course design to get in the way of the flow of things. But again, the act of charging slows your vehicle down to a near crawl, and this is the same button that's required for something like inhaling enemies. Now that is something you can only do when you're close to an enemy, to be fair. But if you're not at the right proximity, you might end up doing the charge instead, cutting your speed in half and you're back in fourth place. I completely understand the mentality behind the process. Kirby has always been designed for the younger audience, so let's make a racing game with only one button. The simplicity is attractive, I imagine, but in execution, it was clumsy, remarkably clumsy. I was not a fan of it. For like the first hour, I was consistently doing poorly in races, and this is with the difficulty set to the default level three. I dread to think what the AI is like at max settings here. There you go, that's Kirby Air Ride's extra mode there. I think that's how it works. The attempt at incorporating Kirby's copy ability here was admirable. They're the standard power-ups for this title, and there's several from previous games like Fire, Sword, Plasma, and Narcolepsy. Most of these are simply used to disrupt for very brief moments. You're right up their ass and you let them have it. Easier said than done though with some abilities. Plasma to use that as an example. If you want to charge it up for a big attack, you gotta wiggle that analog stick left and right to charge the meter, close to how it functioned in Superstar, without needing to do full 360 degree rotations. But still, in a racing game, not the most intuitive power-up despite its destructive power. I didn't find any of the power-ups that useful being real here. There's no real game changers, and in that way, you know, you might find that appealing if you don't like your cartoony racers to be heavily item-based, you know, rather skill-based. I can get that. But there was nothing as satisfying as a shell from Mario Kart or missiles from Crash Team Racing. Some might even actively revolt at the thought of using, like Spike. You get all spiky, sure, you got all these protrusions sticking out of you, but it's got miserable range, and you slow down when you use it because of the simplistic control scheme. So yeah, first impressions were pretty bad. I would wait until I got a comfortable spot in one race, and then I'd move on to the next course to see what else the game offered out of sheer obligation. But then, I started to slowly unlock other vehicles. Just happenstance, wasn't really trying to check the boxes off, but it's just something you do over the course of time. Eventually, I started getting things like the Wagon Star, the Turbo Star, the Rocket Star, a lot of them which I found... Uh, Meh, I just wasn't a fan of their crippling over-specifications. Wheelies had ground speed but were shit in mid-air in a game that largely has you do both mid-air driving and ground driving all the time. The Turbo Star and Slick Star? What the fuck? One's like riding a stick of butter in a frying pan, the other just has shit turning in general. 
It wasn't until I unlocked the Swerve Star where I finally started finding my groove. You can't steer the thing, stay with me now, nor can it charge for boosts, but you can turn in place and zip across wherever you're facing. In any other racer, I would vomit at the very thought of controlling something like this, but in Kirby Air Ride, this thing was a godsend. It's a little precise, yes, but its acceleration is second to none, and finally, Finally, I was starting to win some races. I just had to get the unconventional vehicle, the one that doesn't follow the rules the game sets. I don't know what I'm supposed to take from that, but I did find my niche at last and I played the rest of the courses until I felt I had enough about an hour later. None of these tracks are particularly long and Kirby's the only character to pick at first. With enough playtime, you can unlock a whopping two characters, King DDD and Meta Knight. I used an action replay to unlock them because I did not feel like killing a thousand enemies or having a combined total of 30 minutes of airtime to get them, no thank you. They can't pick different vehicles, but they have their own gimmicks. King DDD can smack things with his hammer, but he's miserable in midair because his vehicle is a wheelie by default. And Meta Knight can only use his sword and it's pretty fragile, but he's got great speed and his flight makes him overpowered in those tracks with a lot of hang time. Not bad, but they have limited appeal because of these over specifications, much like the other star vehicles. But all right, that's Air Ride done and over with. Next, we have Top Ride. And hey, I'm familiar with this kind of setup. I used to play these kind of races in corner star arcades all the time when I was a kid. A bit nostalgic going back into something like this, but this mode is over in like 15 minutes. There's a couple of tracks to pick, you got some power ups to turn the tide, but none of these last much longer than a minute or so. Top Ride is a glorified distraction. You'd find something like this on a mobile app nowadays, something to play when you're taking a shit likely. Now make sure you pick Steer Star for proper turning, because in my opinion, that's the go-to way to control a car with a bird's eye view. You ever play RC Pro-Am? You know what I'm talking about. It's good to turn your vehicle right when you're holding right on the controller. The freestar option is more analog based, but it's so erratic and unresponsive to me, especially when you got opponents doing whatever the hell they want. Can't stand this option, on to the next move. So this is City Trial, and among all the other things I've heard people say about this game, it's City Trial that they talk the most about, and you bet your ass I wanted to know why. Oh, okay, I see, so it's like Smash Run from Smash 3DS. Okay, well I know it's more accurate to say that Smash Run is like City Trial, but you'll have to forgive me, I played Smash Run before I played City Trial, so that's how I look at it. But yeah, so if you're not familiar with how Smash Run works, you take Kirby through this sizable area, basically a giant arena. It's got buildings, tunnels, some woods, and an active volcano. Why the hell they thought it was wise to build a city so close to this is a mystery for another time, but the goal is to get a vehicle of your choosing and soup it up with all these stat bonuses you find across the map. Top speed, offense, defense, weight, flight capabilities, you're trying to grab as much of these as possible, all while making sure your opponent doesn't get much for themselves. After five minutes have passed, you and your opponents are then placed in a stadium event chosen at random, and it could be a classic race like an air ride, a demolition derby type of event called Destruction Derby, though I don't know why it wasn't called Destruction Kirby, come on guys! There could be a drag race where top speed and acceleration is king, a game where you glide into these markers and try to get the most points. There's a good variety that the game has in store for you, but they are, again, chosen at random. So you just gotta hope that all those stat bonuses you picked up are gonna make the upcoming event nice and smooth, or else it might be rather unpleasant. City Trial is chaotic, it's a scramble to get the best stuff for your vehicle while making sure the opposition gets jack all. Oh, the Dragoon pieces, shit, that's from this game? Oh man, fuck the stat boost, I just gotta hunt these down and I think that's a guaranteed victory. Sure enough, if you manage to form the Dragoon, you won. It outclasses everything, especially flight, and it just so happened the event I got afterwards was the gliding one, and hot damn, it wasn't even close. This Hydra is kind of similar, but it's, it's more of a tank. Okay, more like a juggernaut, because once it gets going, it can't be stopped. Much like Kirby's appetite. Jesus. Sometimes you might even get these events that can pop in at random and throw a curveball in the mix. Items becoming super bouncy, which I can't stand. You can provoke God's wrath and deal with an apocalyptic meteor shower, or you can suddenly find yourself- Shit! Yeah, I have to admit I can see why everyone talks about City Trial. It is by far the most interesting mode Kirby Air Ride has to offer, due to the whole chaotic nature of it. It's the thrill of the hunt, whether it's for the stat boost, a specific star to your liking, or looking for those Dragoon pieces, and it caps off with an event that is made more interesting thanks to everything that happened beforehand. It fills you with adrenaline. This was further emphasized when I got to try it with some friends. On top of local co-op, Kirby Air Ride actually allowed players to connect GameCubes together with a LAN cable for a true arc arcade experience. This likely stemmed from Sakurai being a massive arcade junkie in his youth, so I can appreciate the intent behind the idea, but um, did you know anyone that actually had a GameCube LAN cable? I sure as fuck didn't, so I had to make do with some workarounds for this. 
So, um, confession time. I've been using an emulator to record this game because my GameCube has unfortunately ran its course and it doesn't read discs all that well anymore. <sighs> 17 years and I got it used. It was a good run, but I swear I'll get you fixed one day, my dear. This is not how you were destined to die. Anyway, I've been using Dolphin, and I had no hiccups whatsoever. It's amazing how far emulation has come. Maybe I'm out of touch, but I still thought the idea of faithfully emulating the PS1 generation and beyond was largely unfeasible. But folks have come a long way, and now we're at a point where emulation of stuff like the 360 and PS3 exists. For the sake of preservation, that is great to see. Sorry, a little tangent there. So thanks to the Dolphin and this program called Parsec, I was able to experience actual local co-op over an internet connection with my good buddies Linky, Fonz, and Nolan. Apologies for the bitrate being a little shit. In hindsight, it should have been me who hosted the session, but it's better than nothing. Definitely a great means to have fun with friends in the middle of this pandemic. Why am I wearing a mask? This is online. And I'm deeply appreciative that my friends came to my aid for the sake of showing multiplayer because yeah, multiplayer makes Kirby Air Ride much more enjoyable. A safe assumption, certainly not something applicable to just Kirby Air Ride, but I feel compared to other racers I played, you need the multiplayer element in Kirby Air Ride to enjoy it in some capacity. That is more a critique than a compliment, I should stress, because I feel any racing game, be it arcade or simulated, no matter the style, needs to have something for the single player if they don't have friends immediately available. Available. Kirby Air Ride playing solo? It's not that interesting. There's the checklist to keep you trying out new things, but in less than an hour you can experience nearly everything this game has to offer across all modes. There are no other characters to pick besides Kirby with King DDD and Meta Knight only available after completing repetitious goals. Most of the vehicles are hindered by their gimmicks and not my cup of tea. When I was able to get multiplayer going for Air Ride, Top Ride, and City Trial, this was the first time I was able to actively enjoy what was happening on screen, mainly because it was easier for me to ignore the game's shortcomings. And in that regard, Kirby Air Ride picks up significantly. So I stress, if you're going to play this, it needs to be with friends. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. Otherwise, I feel you can ignore this one. I would love to see another attempt at this because the Kirby universe has a lot of potential for this kind of game. You can keep City Trial the way it is because that mode is already pretty damn fun, but bring in more characters. Don't make the other stars so specific and quirks and for the love of God, don't put everything on one button. I saw no such reservation when Smash Brothers was developed and everyone loves those games. So I think they can afford mapping other commands to other buttons. Kirby Air Ride will cost you a bit if you decide to get it. It was never re-released for any other platform. So make sure you don't burn a humongous hole in your wallet when you go look for it. And that is what I'm gonna call a wrap for this first Kirby Marathon. I think I'm at a point now where I can call myself a fan or at least uh, an informed observer. I found a new love in Superstar Ultra, finally got to pick up Kirby 64 after being pestered about it for so long, and now I'm enamored with the whereabouts of Shinichi Shimomura, the Jimmy Hoffa of game developers. Seriously, I hope this man is all right. Now, there's still much to look at in terms of mainline game shit. The spin-offs alone could constitute its own retrospective, but I am quite burnt out of the pink puffs, so into the vault he goes until later on. In the meantime, I'm spending all my additional reserves on completing the Resident Evil Marathon. Still got a couple of games left in that dog before we move on to the next big project of the year. And uh, next time we're looking at the game that was responsible for getting me into the whole franchise to start, Resident Evil 4. So that's what we got to look forward to next time. As always, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. Stay safe, wash your hands, wipe your ass, and much love and appreciation to Trade Coffee for sponsoring the video. Thank you for the elixir of life. Do have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. Please stay safe out there. Rest assured, this is also going to be the only time I'm doing this dual marathon setup. Tried it once, gave it a shot, didn't really like it, so I'm going to keep things more traditional after Resident Evil ends. Going to make some new assets for the channel, new thumbnail, new intro, new song, all that sort of thing. Should be pretty exciting. Got to look at 2020 in a positive light somehow, I guess. Fuck this year.